Okay. And so let's see, where was I? Oh, and then it led to me really getting involved in veteran advocacy because I was, I was getting help. One of the three pillars of success that I learned as a fellow in Honor Courage Commitment was that you get better. You have pushed them out of growth when you um, do community service, when you get out, out there and serve others. You find yourself in the service of others. And then mentorship. Finding somebody who's been there, who's done that, who has already kind of navigated and gone through the path, and they can help you get there without having to struggle so much. And education, learning something new. And so all of that was happening for me and ended up starting my master's in counseling in January of 2016 at UNT. So it's a long ways going. I'm like halfway through. But, um, yeah, add that to the mix of everything I was doing. But in the process of all of that, juggling work, juggling um, school and being a mom and veteran advocate and all of that, I had four friends back from suicide. And I just... Couldn't just do it part-time anymore. Um, the day that my friend Jack Hickey took his life, he was a Marine, two-time Purple Heart, Iraq, Afghanistan. The day he took his life, um, I had talked to him on Tuesday, and this was Thursday. He hadn't responded to me, and I thought to myself, if I don't, I got school tonight, I won't get home till like 10. If I don't hear from him tomorrow, I'll go and check on him. But it was too late. And so, you know, I don't hold myself guilty for that, but the thing is, like, I just knew then I had to make this my passion, my job, to help veterans and to help their families. And in answer to another prayer, MetroCare happened, okay? And it's a new service um, through MetroCare Services. They received a grant, State Bill 55, um, three grants underneath that. And um, that grant allows us to provide mental health services and supportive services for veterans and their families members, regardless of discharge status, regardless of time and service. Um, so we're able to fill in the gaps that the VA can't necessarily do for somebody, for a veteran, let alone for their family members. Now, it was rocky. I'm going to admit it. Somebody in this room has experienced themselves. It was rocky to start with on the financial side because we didn't have our stuff together. It was like when I was in construction field, um, you know, I was, I'd sell the pool, I'd do all of the work, get everybody happy, uh, the family, you know, make those connections in that relationship. Then I would turn in the plans of everything that we're going to do, and then it goes to the superintendent, and we have a meeting, the superintendent and the construction, and um, or the superintendent, me, and the homeowners, we meet, and we make sure everybody's on the same page, and then it goes to construction, and things go smoothly when it works like that. But what happened with us was... <laughs> The infrastructure was not there yet when the, the navigators and salespeople were. And so it was bumpy, but we've got it finally together. Things are starting to get smoother on that. And um, I've really been able to do some amazing things recently as a community navigator. I handle Denton, Tarrant County, Parker, Palo Pinto, and Hood. Now we're handling, eventually, as it rolls out completely, 38 counties in North Texas. Um, so that's the hope. Now, we have the grant through uh, June of 2019, and we're really trying to get this as a, as a program that really pulls everybody together. And we're partnering with all of the different resources and organizations and veteran organizations out there that are doing something for veterans, and we find out who they are. And then when I encounter a veteran, either through organizations like MVPN, because we are partnered with MVPN um, in these counties, we're not... Um, you know, obviously nobody does this alone, so um, we are connecting with everybody, and we're just trying to act as bridges. There's other community navigators like me out there. We're just another one doing it. But so far, I mean, I've got a veteran that the Vet Center put in contact with me, a World War II veteran. This guy is a, should have been a Purple Heart. He just put it, he turned it down because it was in the middle of the battle, okay? And he was a Navy gunner on a ship on Iwo Jima. He was off the coast of Iwo Jima, and he was, he was a gunner. He got shot, and it got grazed on the arm, but he kept going because he was watching those Marines getting shot, and he couldn't stop. And then he went sliding down the rails because all the oil had gone down onto the rails underneath and went crashing onto the ground and crushed his knees. <laughs> he didn't go to sick bay. So some person out there who went over his file about five years ago said that he didn't deserve any disability, okay? <laughs> the man is 92 years old, his wife is 91, and what he said was, we didn't expect to live this long, we're out of money. And they're living on $1,950 a month, oh, and their medical expenses alone are $2,000 for the two of them. Oh, and their caregiver is 77 years old, 
and she is getting uh, using her own money on her fixed income to feed them and going over there and taking care of them and not getting paid and neither one of them knew that their caregiver paid $2,200 a month up to that they didn't know that he could be he had, he had nightmares every night 92 years old He's, but that's when I got him, you know, finally his benefits getting filed. Looks like he's going to get at least somewhere around 50% PTSD. And, and that's going to be money coming in, and it's going to go back to that day five years ago when he did his first claim. So he should get that a oh, big good. chunk of change. Good. You know? <laughs> but that's the kind of, we got to put, we're, like, we're trying to navigate. We're not doing this all alone, is what I was trying to say here. And it, it took some time to get that together and figured out. And um, that's what I get to do is being a navigator. So. Um, we also got them connected to Caltown Warriors. They're supposed to be paying his utilities because they're going to get shut off. And then hopefully Metricare is going to get the package in for that. We'll hopefully take care of things for him for a couple of months until his benefits finally kick in. And then they're going to be on their feet. And that's what we get to do out there, and that's what's happening. We don't know about these veterans, you know, unless we get out there and make a connection and they go, oh, that they might be able to fill in this resource. So when you encounter a veteran in the community or their family member, we can do things to help them. And it involves substance abuse and alcohol. Um, I have another veteran whose sister had been in and out of, um, well, uh, she is an alcoholic, 40 years old, and finally decided she was ready to go into a long-term treatment. And because it fell under housing and substance abuse, they were able to pay the first two months for her. And then after that, she has to work for her pay to stay at this um, sober living. But we were able to help that sister. So, I mean, that's the kind of stuff we can do. So not just the veteran, it's the veteran and their family. And when you encounter those, if you have any more questions after this, I also have um, the little brochures there. And I'm the person you contact. I'm the salesperson, okay? <laughs> and I do the screener. I take the order. And then, but I follow through and I make sure they get to the right resources and I follow up on these veterans. And so um, you can trust that I'm going to do everything I can to make sure and advocate and stand up for them um, when that's the case. Good work. Yay. All right, James, come tell them about your program. Well, how do I follow that? <laughs> well, you have a slideshow. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't have a slideshow. I have a few observations. I'm, I'm with Wake College. My name is James Schroeder. And so my observation so far in meeting this group tonight and my is number one is that Camilla picks up her phone at seven o'clock in the morning on a Monday <laughs> she takes my phone call um, walking her dog and is talking to me about how best she can serve this group of people right here. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. Camilla um, starts working at six. <laughs> she calls people before that. I did not, I, I, I did not know that. Um, I also learned that Eva is the chaplain, but she's not ordained. Whatever that means. <laughs> whatever, whatever that means. Um, I also um, am holding something, I guess you guys will this later, like it's, it's like a historical moment because there's a, I'm holding a noose. And then someone here tonight, Joyce, was mentioning that she has a good friend who actually was one of our program chairs at Wade College back in the late 60s. Is that right? And her name was what? Mildred? Mildred Kelly. That's what it was called, Balance Fashion. Okay. Yep. That's what it was called a long time ago. How many of you have heard about Wade College? Yeah. Okay. So we're located in the InfoMart, which is the largest data center in the world. Um, pardon me, in Texas, and one of the largest in the United States. And um, kind of like just what Rachel mentioned a moment ago is I'm very, I've never served in the military, but I get up every morning and I love what I do. I serve students. Um, I didn't come here to talk about this, but I can relate to people who suffer in addiction. I'm actually getting my master's in addiction studies now. Um, as a fully recovered alcoholic for a long time, I'd go around and, and speak to people throughout um, the Dallas metro area about that subject. But what I'm here to talk about is Wade College and our information technology program. I'm going to invite you later to a women in technology. And I tend to be the minority everywhere I go. Um, <laughs> at, Wade, at Wade College, there is about 95% female um, in yeah. fashion design. And we're rolling out um, our IT program. And I'm inviting you all to an event the first week of May. Um, it's uh, called Women in Technology. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's start with a quick slide. Show. <laughs> so... We've been around since 1962. Now, I know that for some of you, the, the Wade College student is the student that maybe comes right out of high school. It's the student like myself that's in their early 40s and all of a sudden decide they want to do something else, like I'm doing addiction studies. 
we have people, I have students that are attending Wade College that um, are, you know, um, veterans of the military. We have students that, um, I have a student that just actually went, she's been working for a hospital and we really, really love for some years, but she's done that. She's not like me. She doesn't get up in the morning and love what she does. So we have people in all types, you know, of junctures in their educational career. Um, we're accredited. That's very important. The same level of accreditation that SMU or, or Notre Dame would answer to. So we're regionally accredited. Um, we offer associate's degrees and bachelor's degree in information technology, which I'm here to talk to you about real quick. Um, interior design, fashion design, and merchandise marketing. Next slide. Um, over there on the right, that's the Infomart. You, you may have seen that building off of Oak Lawn. So it's, it's, it's hard Those to Those are down the street and look much worse. worse. I think it looks like a Mississippi steamboat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I agree. Yeah. And I thought of when I thought of her. Yes. It's a little bit of a drive. We have people that drive to Wade College and Fort Worth and all over the place. Next slide. Just a couple of quick things is students can get their associates in 16 months. That's if they're tra um, transferring in zero credit. So we're very generous with the way that we're using these credits too. So um, our faculty and staff are all experts at what they do. We don't have hidden fees like flat outcomes with it and all that stuff. Um, our student ratio is 14 to 1. So for our IT program, it's smaller. So it's very, very, it's very hands-on. So imagine it's kind of like this. I don't know if we have anybody in here that is interested in the information technology field, but if I wanted to go to... Oh, wait, that's already what I do. Never mind. So it'd be kind of like, if I wanted to go to an Italian restaurant and like take someone for a nice dinner, I could go to, like, what is it, Olive Garden? Is yeah. Right? yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, it'll get the job done. Or I could go to a little golden wall Italian restaurant off of Oak Lawn where you could it's different. It's just that it's, 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 it's the product that you're getting is different. It's more, it's treated differently, it tastes different, it smells different, because it's more fully emotional that experience. And that's really way in college. Next slide. We start classes three times a year, and we have a summer trimester that begins in June, and then a fall trimester that begins in October, and two weeks in between these breaks. So basically, our students start to go to class for four months um, at a time. And we have day classes and we have evening classes for our high information technology. Next slide. All right, so information technology. So when you hear information technology, what do you hear? I mean, we've got someone that's, are you like a computer engineer or like? Um, <clears throat> I work on the software engineering side. Okay. But my degree is in business computer information tech. Okay. Systems. And where did you get your um, degree at? UNT. Okay. UNT. But I also got. Certifications from the Air right Force. Now, UNT. Yeah. UNT, yeah. <laughs> but I was a cyber systems operator in the Air Force. Okay. So cy cyber systems operator in it is phenomenal. So there's <laughs> tons of opportunities in the IT field too. It's not for everybody, but there's a lot of opportunities. So basically, there's two different, there's a whole bunch of tracks within information technology. Our students are learning to be like initially like the help desk technician that is troubleshooting wireless networks. Um, we're training you if you look in your little folder right there, you can see a list of all the classes for IT. I'm not going to go over each one, but we're teaching you how to troubleshoot, to configure wireless networks, a little bit of cybersecurity, and you can see the certifications that we're teaching our students to. Um, so you're learning how to take apart a computer and how to put it back together. So at the bachelor's level, you would end up being things like, and it's like a systems administrator. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So. This One is an associate's degree? An associate's or a bachelor's. You can do either track. <laughs> so we thought that in a male-dominated industry, that way in college, we're in the lower, <laughs> our programs are all infused with technology, that who would be better to speak to the female population than way in college and create a program? And we're, we're known as the top fashion and interior design school in this part of the country. Um, so why not do that with, with information technology? So you're not walking into, not to the company, probably walking into a, a male-dominated campus or a program. Not at all, not just through. However, <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. Not at all. Um, however, it's, we're in the process of hi hiring, you know, female instructors, and our, our target audience is going to continue to be female. So any questions about the IP program? Yes, ma'am. So does the associate... Around for what you can do, there's three different entry points. You can start off with the associate's degree, 
and that can you can get that done in 16 months. If you're transferring in credits, I've seen people get that done in in just a matter of one trimester. Or you can take you can start with the associates and move right into the bachelor's seamlessly. Or you can just start off immediately with the bachelor's degree, but you have to you have to transfer in a certain number of credits and have a certain GPA. It really works out both the same way. The, the big thing is the, the ability to transfer in credits. So you can actually, out of out of 40 courses, you can transfer in up to 28 courses from other from other institutions, which is actually a very high amount. Mm -hmm. So most places don't transfer in that much. Um, I got my BA in 1974. Uh -huh. <laughs> you still transfer credits that old? Well, absolutely, and I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that old. We have. Maybe I don't know how far back. It's still a degree, though. But um, as long as as long as the institution still has the transcripts, which I'm sure they do, it might be on microfish, but they can get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you went there. <laughs> You know what? I, I know what that is. I didn't know what when I first went in. So like, He's sharp, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway. Do you guys teach some certifications and then provide some certifications? We do not process the certifications, but on the program sheet that I handed you, to the right, you'll see the certification that we train and teach you. So right now our students are learning how to they all just took a huge exam that's preparing them to do the keynote. I'm sure you heard the keynote, which is standard. And so we will pay for you to go take it. We're going to prepare you for it. And then when you go take the exam, we provide a voucher for you to take the exam, exam to tell you if you're not paying for it. And so that program sheet actually, whether it be C++, C++ um, CompTIA, all the certifications will be training you to those. So that's the next question. So, yes. so do you take? The GI Bill, post 9-11 GI Bill, and voc yeah, rehab, rehab, Title 31, yeah. regional all and above, all all cash, stuff. check, credit, and Hazelwood. <laughs> yeah. We do not do Hazelwood. Because it's not a public school. Yeah, it's not a public yeah. school. Next so how much does it cost? If you, were, if you were to walk in and nothing was transferring in zero, it's $32,000 for an associate's degree. If you if you walk in and get the bachelor's degree and transferring no credit, it's sixty nine thousand. Wow. And, 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 you know, UNC, I think our credit per hour is about very similar to those, but you know, we're not designed for the student that wants to go in and, and be around like huge cafeterias and mm -hmm. and yeah. sports teams yeah. and fraternities and sororities. Any other questions? I'm trying to move through this quickly because I know you have a lot of agenda. Uh, Next slide. Okay, admissions requirements, you just have to have proof of a high school diploma or GED. I'm sure everyone qualified in there. Next step of the process. Yeah. Um, we'll get to the next. Next. <laughs> Is there another slide after that? Yeah. Okay, one more slide after that. With, we also have a career services department. We have, so one thing that's very unique about it is we also help you with an internship. So, we have students, many of our students are working as soon as they get out, like 90, like, I can't read it right there, I think it's 90, it's on the next slide, 90% of our students are working. 92? 92 for bachelor's. No, employment. Yeah. Employment is 85 for associates and 83 for bachelor's. Thank you, you can read better than I do. <laughs> and then, so and the big reason for that is, is we help you identify an internship, and with us being in the info mark, um, we You'll notice that there's not a lot of signs in there. I mean, the FBI are in there. But you've got a lot of different entities in there that do not advertise because it's such a large data center and we have partnerships with these companies. Next slide. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. What, what do you account for the difference in the graduation rate between the associates and the bachelor's? Typically, when you have a student that, the bachelor's degree student, is a typical, is a different kind of student. Right. It just is in general. If you look at that just across any institution, your bachelor's degree, if you take a look at your master's degree students, your master's degree students and doctorate levels, you know, they have higher graduation rates as well. I wonder if it's already years of degree, like some of them being in associates and transferring it to a bachelor's instead and realizing well, actually, with the ones that transfer from the associates to bachelors, they they actually have really really good outcomes as well. Yeah. And even the 59 percent, 
59% graduation rate on, a, on, a, on an associate compared to a community college is incredibly high. Yeah. All right, next question. Because the, the junior colleges are washing them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm not going to go, go over all the career opportunities right there, but at an associate's bachelor's degree level, you can be a systems administrator, network security, things like that. Next slide. Next slide. Financial aid assistance, all the stuff that we just talked about. Next slide. Next slide. There's the educational cost. We already covered that. Next slide. See, I was fast on. <laughs> so women in technology. So here's what I've heard is I've heard that a long time ago from a guy named Tony Robbins. Have you ever heard of him before? No, yeah. I've been to his like his big conferences. He always said that people are like People like people who are like themselves, <laughs> or who they like to become. We like people that are like ourselves, or who we like to become. So this lady that is speaking at our Women in, um, women in Technology Lunch and Learn, there's going to be multiple speakers. She's a powerhouse in information technology, and she also is very involved in giving back to the community. So I'd like to invite you all to that, and can I get some help with this? In order to invite you all, I just need you to just you're, you're not going to get a phone call, but I want the phone call, that prompts you. So just fill out your information and then specify if you'd like to be invited, how it's going to be an email invite. If you have a strong level of interest in our information program, just note, and who needs a pen? A pen. And then look at this, this is done. Does anyone need a pen? Okay. Was that quick enough for you? Oh, no, that was great. That was great. I want you to give James a big hand. He also provided your dinner. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll, I will just come up here in the next few minutes before we come. Make sure you get into the Okay, did you have any fun? My bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, James. Okay, we're going to continue with the meeting. Uh, Maggie called me uh, desperately uh, late this afternoon, and she tore something in her knee. Uh, she was calling her husband to take her to the emergency room, uh, so she was unable to be here, although she did uh, do her job and the, got the minutes, but I've asked Lynn to sit in for her uh, in the reading of the minutes from the last chapter meeting. Lynn, would you read those, please? I've not been trained, but I can read. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read. Good. The meeting minutes, uh, 12 February 2018. The meeting of the Women Veterans of America, Chapter 48, was called to order at 1900 hours on 12 February 2018 in Denton, Texas, by Commander Camilla Zimbel, Sergeant at Arms, posted the colors and led the Pledge of Allegiance. Chaplain led the prayer, the group in prayer. Carrie Sconza, now, correctly, the women's coordinator with the Texas Veterans Commission was introduced and provided a presentation on mental health and TVC programs. The minutes of the January 2018 meeting were read. The financial report was given by Bell Small. Beginning balance in the chapter bank account was $795. And the ending balance was three thousand eight hundred and fifty-five and fifty-eight cents. <laughs> Susie Drake gave the membership report there to this minute here. There are currently fifty paid members in our chapter. There are fifty-nine names on the roster. Nine individuals have not finished their processing to become a member. Since 20 January, there have been 10 new members added to the chapter. Uh, Eva Fulton gave the chaplain and social services report. There was one escort for a veteran to attend a CNP exam. There were two home visits. There were one, there were, or was, one condolence. Two applications for social services assistance were received. 
Eva made one trip to Austin with a veteran that was receiving a new car. Oh, new to her. The sergeant at arms gave a report for the honor guard. The committee is currently in the research phase. Equipment is estimated at $1,800. They are researching the cost of uniforms. Anyone can be in the honor guard without having to be a member of the honor guard committee. And calendar of events. The antique car show will be held on 3 March with a rain out date of 17 March. Our chapter will be running a hot dog stand. Equipment and food has been donated. At least 10 volunteers are needed for this event. Number B, Ginger talked about veterans getting their military story heard and sent to the National Archives. There are people to write the veteran's story, edit the story, have the veteran review, and final copy sent to the National Archive. Heroes on the Water will be hosting a fishing kayak day. All equipment will be supplied. Project Camo is a mental health first aid. It is one and a half days of training. MVPN basic training will be held on 22 February and 13 March at the Denton Center. And 9 June, Celebration of Women Veterans. This will be an all-day event open to all veterans, their families, and friends, and will be children-friendly. Volunteers will be needed for this to be a successful event. More info coming soon. Camilla presented a Commitment Sisterhood patch that will be awarded to women that show exemplary dedication in the work of the chapter. The Dallas VA Hospital has opened a clinic to support veterans that need evening appointments. The clinic is open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 15.30 to 23.30. And finally, the Sergeant at Arms retired the colors. The meeting was adjourned by Camilla Zimbel. The hours are not stated. The next general meeting will be at 1900 hours on Monday, 9 April 2018 in Denton, Texas. Minutes submitted by Maggie Moorhead, adjutant. Commander, I move that we approve the minutes as read. I second that. Well, I, I did have one thing. There was a couple of uh, dates missing. Do you have some dates that you want to put on on camo and uh, heroes on the water, or have those events already happened? Those have passed. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, thank you. Now say that again, please. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as read. I second that motion. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. The minutes will stand as read. I, I will fill in the hour or, or give that to her. She probably, she wasn't here, so she probably didn't know that. So uh, thank you very much, Lynn, for doing that. And you can just stay up here. Because I'm going to talk about you and, and uh, Laura Newman. Would you also come up and Christy Campo? Lynn is going to talk a little bit about this wonderful newsletter. But I want to tell you about working with this committee. This is your newsletter committee, along with Maggie, who's not here, and they have met nearly every Thursday for the last month and getting the newsletter together. They are a tremendous team to work with. I'm extremely impressed with them. They've done a wonderful job. I wanted to make sure that they got a sisterhood patch tonight. Thank you for your time. And I want them to tell you a little bit about the newsletter and their process, and I think Lynn is going to tell you. Sure. Uh, very quickly. Um, this, this is your correspondent. Many of you received a panic quick request because the news, the brand new newsletter, the inaugural first edition, was going to come out. We wanted to quickly get it out in time for this meeting. Um, and so she sent out to all of the, um, uh, the committee chairs and officers, whatever she could, as quickly as possible. She's the one you were talking to, if you didn't know her. And so <laughs> Laura Newman uh, is going to continue to, until we get to issue number two, to be your contact to write stories when you go to events. You need to actually chronicle what happened. Um, really important for this issue, uh, April is going to be always an issue month that it comes out four times a year, April being the first spring. Um, and but the next one that will come out in July, um, we will have just had the big June events, right? 
And the thing is, is it already tells you, if everyone's got a copy now, that our submissions deadlines are down at the bottom corner on the right of your first page. So that you always know that you need to have by the 15th of the month ahead of publication, all of your stories, your photos turned in. You're going to send them to Laura Newman, and then she assorts, et cetera, sends it to me. I'm your editor, Lynn Joe, J-O-B with a long O. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we did have intense time. I, I'm just so, it was such a pleasure to work with Maggie and with uh, Laura, and we did phone calls with Christy, and Susie had to jump in at the last minute, put a file out there for us. So, but it was such a pleasure, um, this committee. It was, really has been fun. And I look forward to, uh, to a second edition, edition coming out. Uh, so again, remember, by June 15, okay, so the Texas uh, Women Veterans Day is June 12. Our event's June 9. June 15 is pretty close to that. You're going to already need your write-ups and everything. So what we're recommending as a committee is that every time that you go out and you're doing something, take some pictures, chronicle it, give us uh, who, what, when, where, and why, send that. She's going to she's gonna gather everything. By the time our next edition comes out, we're going to try to put in there whatever we can. Camilla proofs the final version before we go live. It is out there now on the line. I heard many have already seen it. We've got two locations for it. Um, it's in Maggie's Google Drive with a Google address, and it's also on my business, which is hosting it right now, so it's, so it's live right away, and that's there for you. Just want to remind you, so we've got the officers now, okay, both in hard copy and always spinning out there as that PDF. Um, you've got the officers, you've got the committee, so if you try to contact any of us, here we are. The monthly meetings, it's always the second Monday of the month, but here they are spelled out for you. Um, reminding you to check social media. This, is, this document is fixed. It's not going to keep changing, so, but life does. And our events will, so be checking social media all the time for last minute uh, uh, things. We also have, are in, uh, introducing you to your, your committees. Um, they all reported things that, now they've done lots more, but they reported just some quick things that they've done. So here's all your committees. And then your contact info for the committees are right here. Um, and as you can see, it does fold. So that if you want to print and fold or whatever and mail, you'd be able to do that. We don't, we don't have a, a way to do mass mailing, but you all are our mass mailers. If you want to print out, and I have instructions on the inside for you of how to make it look like this, you can print and mail hard copies. Uh, also, um, we have on the back here some instructions about how you can dial in and watch um, these aren't exhaustive, but they're good instructions. Might be all you need. We want to make sure they're just out there all the time, so anybody might be able to get a chance to dial in and see us. Uh, so uh, that's pretty much it. But please read the commander's letter. It is very sweet. Uh, she has got uh, her heart is very evident here. She has stated the mission and the point of of why we exist very clearly. Um, she has stand up, stand out, and be there as being our motto, and uh, so that is well reflected here. The idea being we hope it will be a format that's, that you know, this could change. This is our first issue, but an idea that you will have contact info always on a first page and always on a final page, and we can expand this as needed by adding four more sheets that fold in to get all those pictures she's excited to share. Now remember, social media is the best place for them, but we do want pictures. And, and, and so faces. you'll need to turn those into Laura if we're going to get those, and everything by the 15th of the month prior of when we publish. That gives us only a couple weeks in committee to actually get everything written and formatted and checked and go through all that we went through. Um, so I'm gonna don't want to take any more time with that, but Let's I think give them a big there. hand for a big job. Woo! 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 
Uh, that is to say that um, in the state of Texas, they will offer uh, women veterans or other veterans free tags of all kinds of Lots designs. Of like this on my car. So you can see Camilla, she's got the women veteran one. License. Well, they're not, they're not free. If yeah. you personalize them, then they're $40. But if, if you choose one of their designs, then they're free. And how do you go about doing that? You take, go take, your, take your receipt up there and, and yeah. renew it at the office. You, you need to no. yeah, I have disabled veteran on my sure that? So you need your DD-214? Yes. If you're a disabled vet, you need your award letter for disability. You need your driver's license, your insurance, and it needs to be current. It cannot have expired that day like I did. <laughs> I have to go at home and print it and then come back. So make sure that you look at your insurance before you go. And then um, have a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. Your card's registration form. Your card already. registration <laughs> form and, and have a lot of patients. Know your IN number uh, for uh, your VIN number, VIN number, VIN number, VIN 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 number VIN whatever they're looking. Um, and then go in and they'll take care of And one last shout out to New yeah. Life Church Denton who provided us with uh, 50 free copies. Uh, so mm -hmm. we would have hard copy. Uh, and then we also thank uh, the um, uh, FedEx uh, that gave us a nice discount on a few others. And uh, just to remember, these are wonderful tools to share with people who might like to be sponsors. And I know that you're talking about getting more sponsors for this group. And they'd like to know a little bit about us. And here you can always show people this is us, and I did that for the pastor today. And she's like, boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh, he gets it. He gets it, right? So use that tool. And uh, that's why you've been there. given a hard copy, and we'll talk yeah. more about that in a minute. Thank you very much, ladies. Okay, I'm going to ask our finance officer, treasurer, to give the finance report. Well, it's perfect following the newsletter committee because the one thing I like to point out something each month folks who go a little bit out of their way, Maggie donated her own funding to purchase the software program to do the newsletter. Oh, so wow. big That's shout cool. out to her. That was That's really, wow. really significant. I really appreciated her. Um, so I heard from the minutes, um, our last amount was 38.55 and 58 cents. We are up to currently 55 and 28. Ooh. Yeah, very, very awesome. From our last, um, our fundraiser. When we get down to the fundraising event, I will share that. Well, actually, let's do it now. I, I'd like Belinda and Gail. And Bell to stand up. There's your committee for the hot dog fundraiser. They all have patches, so I'm not going to give them another one. So shake it. Another shirt. I like another shirt. Yeah. Chili. No chili. That's right, we did. Yes. Let's say you have us, we made selling hot dogs. Yes, selling. So after everything was done, all donations, all receipts for items we actually had to purchase, we made $1,235. Did they do an awesome job or what? Well, what's, <laughs> yummy, yummy what's our dollar amount again? <laughs> what's our dollar amount currently? Um, 55, 28, 24 cents. I've been now we're going to do a membership report that is also up. Uh, Vice Commander is going to tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so currently we have 53 paid members. Um, we had two new members in March and two new members in April. And just for Q1, we had 13 new members. Very good. Just to give you guys wow. an idea like what we're doing. And 
I want you to know that uh, I'm going to talk here a minute to the Frisco ladies. Uh, we know that there is a large group over there that's interested. I'm not sure that they're all at Larcy's house. How many you got there, Larcy? Hold on. I've got her muted. Wait. Let me unmute Wait. you first. We're going to unmute you. Hang on. <laughs> the party at Larcy's house tonight? Yes. Hi, Larcy. Oh, she can't be. <laughs> Actually, I think maybe she might be muted. Uh oh. She muted us. <laughs> hey, Larcy. Can you hear us, Larcy? Okay. Okay. How many do you have there, Lorsi? Uh, three. <laughs> oh my God, I like that. Oh, you don't count. Oh, dog. <laughs> Can we make the dog a member? Yeah. <laughs> a man, a dog, right? yeah is it a female or a male? <laughs> 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 Okay. We have a social event on Friday. Larcy, do you have more information about that, uh, the Frisco social event? I don't, but I bet Tina does. Yeah, it's, it's Friday night in Frisco. Um, it's in Frisco at City Works. And let me check the time. It starts at, I think it's 530. Is that right, Sheena? Yes, I don't know. Yes, maybe 5:30. I know. I know. Tina Sheena said yes. Yeah, I know it's she on Facebook, it anyway. but my point to you is this, and to the Frisco women, is that's going to be a big recruitment event for us. They have a large group over there that is getting together, and of course, they're just like some of our young ladies. They can't come each time, but uh, there is a large group coming that Friday evening over at Frisco. And so I did send Larcy with some applications for tonight, but there is a lot of interest over in Frisco, and Frisco is, uh, the city of Frisco is also joining with us, uh, along with Little Elm for the June 9th event. And so they're really getting involved with what we're doing here. So I wanted to know. And Sheena is one of us in all that. Sheena can give us more information on this. Yeah, book. hi. Am I muted? You're good. You're good. We can hear you. So the City Works uh, event is actually hosted by the mayor of Frisco. He's doing a whole veteran social formation. It is at 5:30 at City Works at the Star. Um, it's going to be really, really big. We have over 100 veterans already RSVP to attend. Not just all females, but men too. All are welcome. It's a family event, and um, it's going to be really, really awesome. So we're, we plan to show up and. Uh, represent Women Veterans of America, and hopefully we can find some other special women to join us too. Yeah, with the, uh, <laughs> with the um, he's my biggest fan. And then um, with regards to the June 9th event, the Frisco Community Band has offered to play um, in at the event as well, and so uh, it's all kind of forming together. It's going to be great. It is. Thank you, Sheena, and thank you for all your support. Yeah. Okay, uh, Chaplain, can you get a social service report? Uh, so yes, I do have a prayer request form that I didn't make copies of and bring with, but we can uh, get that put on the shared drive so you all have access to it. But you can always email me, call me, text me, message me, whatever. I'm on social media all the time. Um, I helped uh, myself and another lady, we helped uh, one of our sisters decorate her new apartment. She needs some help with hanging pictures. So we spent a few hours helping her and she fed us some good um, food from Guam. So that was really good. And then I took her out to eQuest and we had some fun out with a, a social project uh, with Hooves for Heroes and worked on planner stuff. And so she was really a great photographer on helping, helping capture that time. Um, uh, had some follow-up phone calls. And then one of my neighbors watches my social media stuff. And she contacted me Thursday to be, uh, to represent for the veteran tribute for her father, uh, who the funeral was Friday. So he was a Vietnam veteran and she, Said, you know, who else to contact? Which, uh, so I made, com I made 
contact with the chaplain who the pastor who gave the service they're out at um, Carswell giving five services every weekend mm -hmm. so we have an active duty uh, you know contact now to get plugged in so we also, we also helped a couple of people too then since the last year financial yes Still lived it. <laughs> yes. Well, you just said it. Okay. Did you read in the Denton paper? It was in the Denton paper where women or uh, women vets, other spouses, or if your husband's a vet and her spouse, that they could be buried at the cemetery for free. No, I didn't know that. I don't get the Denton paper, so. Uh, it's it was very. My my husband didn't because we didn't know that that your spouse could also. Oh. Hmm. But it was in the Denton Sunday Denton paper, and I will try to get it at home and bring it to you. Or, or I probably can find it online. Well, it was also, in the paper. also on that note to prepare yourself. It was in the watchdog, you know, watchdog, the guy yeah. watchdog. Okay. About, have you um have you ever heard of the pre eligibility form with the VA for your burial benefits? No, and that's see, always a good thing too. Yeah, see, we didn't know this. And years and years ago, somebody knocked at our door selling stuff and, and uh, for yeah. veterans. And well, I am too. And we thought we were doing good and yeah. bought this and bought right. that. And, anyway, we didn't buy it. Okay, thank you. But anyway, I thought you all would like that. Would be interested yeah. in Sunday's yeah. paper. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. I'd like anybody who participated this weekend in the practice of the honor guard to come forward. Do I have anybody here? <laughs> I want to give you just a little bit of history of how we progressed here. Um, this lovely lady here <laughs> went dressed like this at my request uh, to an Altrusa meeting. And they beautifully uh, supported us and adopted seven of our Honor Guard members to buy them uniforms. Mm -hmm. oh, so I'm going to let Dana tell you a little bit about what she's done. And, and she has a patch, as you can see already, but I don't think Diane has oh, one. Okay. okay, you don't get one either. Oh, but this is what we do. Okay, okay, great. Okay. We had several that participated in practice that you saw at getting ready for our debut on June 9th. They went over and also tried on and got their uniforms ordered, correct? Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of more items that will go on the uniform. They have a, a red name tag here. They can put any ribbons that they have here. And they'll have a rocker arm that goes right here. And then they'll be done. <laughs> but we have those on order. And I think they're going to look great. I'm going to let you tell anything you want to tell. Okay. And thank okay. you for all that you've done. Yes, ma'am. Our honor. So we, uh, yes, we, we, I just, I cannot believe what a great um, outpouring of interest also to support this um, honor guard has been. And um, people have always been getting back with me all the time whenever, whenever they can come or whenever they can't come. So we have a really nice little network now. We have an, e a, an email system set up. We have a tech system set up. We're getting a Facebook, uh, just an Honor Guard Facebook group set up too. So that way we can pass more word just for our group. Um, and then also we're going to, um, on Saturday, or let's see, it was Saturday and Sunday. On Saturday we went to um, Guyer High School. Thank you, Bell. They, Chris, is his name Chris, Chief? Uh -huh. He was outstanding. And it was freezing on Saturday. <laughs> and we had, I think, was. let's see, who all do we have? We have um, me and Christy, uh, Bristol and Amanda and Diane. Diane, you came. Yeah, you were there. And Rose and Charity. No, Rose couldn't make it. Rose and Charity no. was there. We had. And it was the other. Lindy. Lindy. Lindy came. Mm -hmm. Lindy's yeah. a new member. <laughs> and um, anyway, we the cadets trained us, and they were so incredibly motivating. I just cannot believe it. Mm -hmm. Some of those kids got up at 5 a.m. So that they could help us, 5 a.m. to get there and run 14 miles. Oh, my daughter did it too. <laughs> she did. Yeah. 
She is adorable. Oh, this is, oh my gosh. So and they ran 14 miles <laughs> because they were doing a, a thing. They were doing an event, a fundraiser, or some kind of an event. And all these kids were out running, and then they came and helped us. And it was just, it was awesome. And then we got to watch them do their own color guard at the baseball field. So it was outstanding. Mm -hmm. um, and then Sunday, we went to the Joint Reserve Base, and we did uniform fittings. We did order some. Um, so, some stuff is going to come in. So that will be our first time to go to the JRB to get uniforms. And then we also did training with um, Lieutenant Colonel Crossley. Crossley and then uh, First Sergeant, what was his name? I can't remember his name. But it, it was it was wonderful because Saturday we kind of knocked the dust off and we got things mm -hmm. figured out. And then Sunday we got to go through it five or six times actually putting it all together. So, so we have more trainings coming up. We're going to start doing it during the week also for those that can come in the week or we're going to do it on the weekends too. So more information to come. Awesome Jesse did course. not come up. I want you to stand up, Jesse. Also, yeah, she's part of that this, this, this is our tax player. Do you have to show your They contacted me because you're a musician. Would you be willing to learn how to play cash for us? <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, uh okay. Sure. I've had brass on the mills like five years ago. This is not my main instrument. And then I'm just like, I'm going to have to practice, which means I need to get an instrument. And so we were starting to do a little bit of looking and pricing and stuff like that. And I thought, I'm part of four different veterans Facebook groups. Let me see if anyone just has a band instrument laying around. Well, thanks to one of the members with, what's the name of the radio show? Alliance for the Brave. Alliance for the Brave. She knew a gentleman, and he's like, oh, yeah, i got a bugle laying about. So we met. A couple weeks ago, and well, uh, <laughs> by the way, we can see you on the camera. Yeah, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but she's going to be ready by June 9th, aren't you? <laughs> I'm going to try. Right now, it sounds worse than uh, uh, radar on MASH. So. <laughs> <laughs> be women of honor, especially our military women who go above and beyond. And I'm just saying thank you. Absolutely. And I greatly appreciate every one of us. They're awesome. <laughs> what can I describe to hang out with? It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I'm going to tell you something about this lady before I let her talk, okay? I cannot tell you how amazing Colonel Simonson is. If you don't know that yet, you're going to have to hear it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, give it to her. Yes, yes. I need to I'm tell you, sorry. this woman is amazing. And um, she's right. Sometimes I send her emails at 5 and 5.30 in the morning because my mind is working then. But uh, Colonel Simonson has agreed to help us with the June 9th event, and she is just amazing. Uh, we went out to walk the site. <laughs> she just tickled me to death. I tried not to laugh. But <laughs> she she is that type of person. Boy, she was laying it all out. She had, I, it, It's just amazing to work with her. Uh, and so... I want you to know that I'm going to give her a patch, and I hope that someday she'll wear it on a shirt, maybe on June 9th. And so I want to bring up something about that right now. Um, we do have the hats up here if, if you want them. You're going to want one of those red hats and a red polo on June 9th. You're going to want to stand out as a WVA chapter member. Uh, we're having some amazing T-shirts made. Um, I, I think the design is awesome, don't you? Uh, we're having some other things made that you're going to want to be a part of, and because you're a WVA member, you get them for free. So, But you're going to need to buy you a red polo shirt. Even if you don't get the logo on it, that's fine. You're going to need a red polo shirt, and you're going to want a red hat because you're going to want it for the sun. But we're going to have to have a lot of volunteers for this event, and we want to get you excited about it. But we want to see you all out there in those red shirts and red hats, okay? Is that so, really gravy? I'm sorry? Embroidery. 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 
Yeah, we're having them embroidered. We do not have any patches from National, so uh, we just need to go ahead and get them embroidered, okay? You can take it anywhere you want to, but if you take it to Embroidery King, where I have the already paid for out of my own pocket the model, then it's a lot cheaper. Because you have to, you know, they have to have the setup, and I paid for that out of my pocket, so that's already done. And Embroidery King is right, is on the left, goes on the left sleeve. But they know there where to put it. That's all you have to do is just have that. You don't have to have your name put on it or anything. That's just more money. Only the officers have to have that. Okay, you can put it on your left chest if you'd prefer. The you can, the bylaws say you can put it on the left sleeve or the left chest right here. So, Benny, you don't have to have this. The, the the officers have to have this, okay? But nobody else has to have that. That's up to you what you do with that, okay? But you might want to go to Broadway King. It's on Justin Road right off of 35. Very, very easy to get to. Look it up in Broadway King. It's next to the Landmark Grill in a little strip center just past a QT or racetrack gas station on the right-hand side as you get off 35. So it's easy from everybody around to get to, okay? But you're going to want that for June 9th. So I just wanted to bring that up. Now, would you tell us the MVPN calendar and what you got going on, Colonel Simonson? Sure. And it's just ginger. Please, it's just ginger. Yes, ma'am, Colonel Ginger. Yes. <laughs> So I just want to go over a couple of new things we got going on. So we did start yoga this uh, last week, and I'm going to leave all these uh, flyers on the table back there. So if you're interested, please take one. Uh, every Thursday, three o'clock for women vets, and, and five o'clock for men vets. If you know you've got husbands that would like to try, and it's uh, it's going very well. I mean, that's on Thursday. Yes, ma'am. Kyle, or where? It's at the Chris Kyle Veterans Center, and uh, our instructor Kim Couch has been trained by Yoga Warriors International, and so they work with uh, veterans. And she's very understanding of older veterans like myself, who are very inflexible. <laughs> you know, she didn't laugh at me once. Well, maybe once. <laughs> All right. The other uh, new program we have: Substance Abuse Veterans Meeting. And that's on Thursdays, uh, the first and third Thursday of every month. And so that's for folks that might have uh, a substance abuse or alcohol pro uh, issue that they want to work on or any kind of addiction. I mean, I tell you, there's a lot of addictions out there. I've had quite a few of them, so there's more than just that. So flyers for that. Um, this Veterans Center uh, is celebrating its one-year anniversary. Uh, am I talking to you <laughs> anyway, uh, he's loving it. Okay, uh, on the 12th, so that's coming up uh, this week. Friday, what is it? Thursday, Thursday. Friday, Thursday. Thursday. And so I'll put that out there. It's from four to six, so you might have a chance, you know, if you work. Um, it'll be right here, and they'll have refreshments and snacks and things like that. And then all the service providers will also be here. All right. And then uh, this is not an MVPN uh, uh, what a sponsored thing, but uh, Grief Works is putting on a special um, community presentation, loving from the outside in, mourning from the inside out, helping yourself heal when someone dies. And you know, we all go through grief, and most of us try to gut, you know, just gut it out and do it ourselves. But this is uh, by a pretty prominent uh, guy who works on grief and PTSD as well, uh, Dr. Wolfelt. And he wrote the book, Loving from the Outside In, Morning from the Inside Out. So that is here. And then I just got word today that there's going to be a special Heroes on the Water in Grapevine uh, from Chris Hampton and our buddies with the, they're now called the Brazos. Uh, chapter of Heroes on the Water. So that's 28 April, uh, 8 to 3 p.m. It's early, but you get uh, free breakfast, free lunch. You have to RSVP. It's limited to the first, what, 45 veterans. It's, it's a great, great event, really. And uh, I, let's, what else do I want to tell you? I got some other brochures uh, from the Kyle Center. Um, you know, for those of you who haven't made it down there, it's four miles down the road, and then some stuff about MVPN. We've got two classes, MVPN basic training this month on the what? 
Thursday the 12th, thank you, and Saturday the 28th of April. And the last thing, uh, we decided, you know, we need a fun night. So at the Chris Kyle Center, we're going to do uh, a poker night slash bingo night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so bingo. <laughs> the last Friday of each month, and I don't have a flyer for that yet, um, but uh, Claire, who if you, any of you came to our Circle R Ranch event last, uh, I think we got some somebody's kids addicted to bingo. But it was <laughs> yeah. Claire Brown, one of our volunteers, calls bingo for the senior center. You know, Claire. And so she's going to call bingo, and we'll have two uh, rooms for poker. What time does that start? Uh, what time does that start? I think we're going to probably do it about 6.30. About 6.30. What, right. what, we need to know what the start date of that is. That's the 27th of April. So, and I, I, I have uh, some April calendars anyway, and that has everything on it. The reoccurring events, oh, you know, you'll be able to tell what those are. Um, and I think that's about all I have for now. And that's so, for both men and women, right? Uh, but yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I didn't think you guys would want to do yoga. Yoga as well. I mean, we like can't poker. <laughs> I, I don't want to. No, my husband would no. do All right. Let me tell you what she tells me sometimes when I send her something. She says, oh, my day job got in the way. Can you see why? <laughs> Very busy woman. All right. One other thing that I need to tell you about June the 9th, uh, with a lot of your help, um, here's the cities that we have set up uh, or have sent out proclamations to. Some of them we have dates for that I would like to tell you about so that if you live in that city, hopefully you will come and be present. Okay, Aubrey, Charity, right? We don't have the date to be read on that one yet. Joyce Carrollton called me today. They are going to read it, and they're supposed to get back with me about a date. The mayor's office called me today. Luckily, I wasn't out walking the dog. <laughs> uh, uh, she said she would get back with me. She has not given me a date yet. Uh, Corinth, Sharon Bosley set up. It's going to be June the 7th at 7 p.m. Denton. Uh, Ginger and I set up will be June 5th at 6.30 p.m. If you live in the city of Denton, we'd love for you to come out to the city council meeting and hear the reading of that proclamation. Denton is June 5th at 6.30 p.m. And where's it going to be at? It'll be at the city hall. Uh, I don't know the address off the top of my head. Yeah, right on McKinney there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Close to the library? Yeah. Uh, Double Oak in Flower Mound is June the 4th at 6 p.m. at Flower Mound City Hall, correct? And Frisco with Sheena Lawless is June the 5th at 6 p.m. For those of you who live in Frisco, uh, Sheena needs you to come out for that reading. Uh, Eva, do you have a date from Justin? No. I sent uh, it in. Susie, do you have a date from the same boat? You might need to call her. Okay, I do not have a date from Lake Dallas I yet either, Ginger. <laughs> I, I, I talked to somebody over there, but I have not heard back from anybody. Uh, Louisville is June the 4th at 6.30 p.m. Little Elm is June the 9th. They will read their proclamation at the event. Okay, um, Ginger and I went over and met with the mayor last week. Uh, it was a great meeting. They're very supportive. We think that we're going to have a lot of support from the city. Uh, no problems there. Roanoke, do you have anything from Roanoke? Okay. And Coppell has contacted me, and they're going to read on May 22nd. Uh, Rachel, I'd love for you to come That's out. That's my birthday. Well, we'll celebrate your birthday afterwards. Coppell contacted you? Weird. You can go to City Hall for your I, birthday. I Woohoo! <laughs> you do? You know Susan Hunt? I mean Karen, Karen Hunt. That's awesome. I've noticed since I was young. May 22nd at 730. At 730. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Okay. Uh, we'd like to see you come out for those readings if you can, um, especially if you live in the city uh, of where it's being read. You know, it'd be great for you to be there and be represented. So we expect to see a lot of you over here at Denton. Yes, ma'am. 
Uh, Flower Mound is yes. just June 4th to 6 p.m. And then we put it out to everybody. There'll be a whole thing of, you know, yeah. schedule. We're just trying to get them all together. So I've made a table to try to keep up with them uh, because we got them going every which direction. Now, what we did was, or I should say what I did, uh, Ginger probably would have wanted me to send them to some others, but because we didn't have members in those particular areas, some of the smaller cities we did not send them to. We just chose some of the larger cities where we had people living in the area, you know, where they had large number of women veterans, and those are the ones we sent it to. So that's the list. But if anybody wants to do it somewhere else, I mean, yeah, just let us know. The, the letter and, and send it out. Okay. Any questions about that? And that's the proclamation for the Texas Women Veterans Day. Now, I'm going to ask uh, Christy to tell you, I'm going to tell you that you're going to see the logo on your T-shirts. You're going to see the logo on some other items. And so I wanted you to know Christy Campo designed the logo. So I want you to let her tell you a little bit about what that logo means. Thank you. <clears throat> That was the labor of love, let me tell you. Okay. So I was asked by uh, VR from the Women's uh, Resource Center to, if I was interested in designing a logo for Women Veterans Day, and of course, I said yes, right? And then she gave me uh, certain criteria that I had to kind of keep in mind, and a little bit about my, back, my background, because I know there's some new people um, online and some new people here that have not known me, but I have a bachelor's in graphic design, I have a master's degree in fine art, and what I do for a living is graphic design and website development, so uh, that's why VR asked me, and because I'm a veteran and because we're friends. <laughs> it comes with perks, right? So she gave me this criteria that she wanted me to keep in mind for uh, the um, the logo. So she said it has to encompass all women from all eras and multicultural because we are multicultural, right? So how do you do that? How do you design a women uh, uh, a logo for? all women of all eras and not be exclusive or inclusive, right? And so um, I was having a really hard time with it uh, because they wanted like a female uh, silhouette, but which female, right? How many do you put on there? Three? And then which three, right? And, and so then I was like, okay, so I went back to the drawing board and what I ended up doing was that I wanted to design the logo that was more font oriented and when I started playing with the font then the silhouettes came into mind and you can't really see it on this logo but if you go to womenveteransday.com you'll see it really big and, and like um, Camilla said you'll probably see it on the t-shirts and some other places but uh, there's significance to everything that I did okay so the blues and the reds it's different than uh, it's slightly different than the color, our current colors because I went back to history. So the blues are a little bit darker, the reds are a little bit muted because way back when colors were mixed by hand, and I can get into like geeky stuff that I'm not going to, um, mm -hmm. but they were mixed into small batches by hand, right? And they would control the batches, and from year to year the batches would slightly change. So our colors are mixed by hand on my computer and uh, <laughs> made for you in that respect. So the gold, if you look at this little logo on the, on the sheet, the gold where it says June uh, 12th and then the five stars is in gold because women are precious. And without us, uh, our men, when women started fighting in the military or being part of the military, wouldn't have been free to go fight. So we are precious and we're made out of gold. So that's the significance of the gold and the and then the June twelfth and you know why? Because it, that's the day that got proclaimed to be June twelfth Women Veterans Day, right? And then the three silhouettes in the star. I put us inside the star because again we're precious and without us men wouldn't have been enabled to do their job when we first started being part of the military. And then 
so I wanted to to make that centric to to the design and then you have three women so the first woman is just the woman saluting um, the woman that did not see combat and she wasn't allowed to be in any combat role but she served the military so the, the pre uh, uh, up to the Persian Gulf War um, that's the female there then the second female is the combat veteran uh, to her right or our left if you're looking at the paper she's the one in, in uh, that actually got to see combat and then the third woman to the other side is a silhouette of a businesswoman that would be the veteran that comes out of the military and becomes a stay-at-home mom or goes into the business um, world and you know she's active in her community or she's busy raising her kids or a combination of the three and so that's what our logo is and, and there's a lot of history and detail into it and I wanted everybody to know so that you're proud of it and so that you can explain it to somebody else so when you're looking at it you know what it means and you know what what we went through to get to this day right so you wear it with more pride and then the other thing is that it took me four months people so, <laughs> you were you were really like mixing those I colors by hand the color by hand so it took me four months to come up with that so I'm proud of it and I wanted you guys to know what I went through and what it means to me to give it to you guys to use the only thing I ask is don't change the logo and if you want to change please email me because I have variations of it so don't change the color you can do a black or you can do a white but don't add any more colors and then just ask me because I believe me I have other variations of it that would work and that's it thank you so in front of you each of you have not only a newsletter that tells more about our organization but a sponsor form and what I want to do is challenge you to find somebody that you know who would be willing to give some kind of donation to sponsor our June 9th. Even if it's a $10 donation all the way down there at the bottom, they can do that. But I know you know companies, you know, I mean, who you get your insurance from. Maybe somebody you're close to. I don't know who it is, but find somebody that would help sponsor this event. That'll help pay for printing. That'll help pay for, because we'll have to send out invitations. We'll have a program, uh, different printing costs that we have. We're going to have food costs. We're not going to make the food. We're going to cater the food so that, because we're now up to about 500, we have over, I think it was this morning I checked, it was 130 signed up already for the event. Okay, it's, we expect over 500 veterans out there. And so we felt like that that would be a little bit too much cooking. So we've decided to <laughs> cater the food, but we have to pay for that. That has to be paid for. And you don't want us to spend all of our $5,000 paying for this event. Now, MVPN has already chipped in to help pay for the rental of the pavilion and the amphitheater. So we've already got that taken care of. But the point is this. We need sponsors. And I know everybody knows somebody that you could bring that paper back in May to the meeting in May with somebody signed up to sponsor this event. Okay? Okay, I'll be glad to give you some more. <laughs> you need more sponsor sheets? Contact me. I'll send them to you. Okay, one other thing. We have a fundraiser that's coming up, and the purpose of this whole fundraiser that's being done by the Denton County Jeep Club, they are so outstanding. They're doing it at the Bolivar Barbecue. I placed a, uh, a woman on a Jeep event on the Facebook page. Uh, the purpose of their fundraiser is to buy the equipment, not the uniforms, but the equipment for the honor guard. We have to have flags, we have to have belts that the flags go into. You saw them wearing them in the, in the picture. Different equipment that they need to do the honor guard and that's what this fundraiser is paying for. So we need you to get, come out. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be in Sanger, Texas at the Bolivar barbecue place on 519 from 12 to 4. Come out, have, uh, I, th I think the 
beer is like two dollars, have a beer and some barbecue, barbecue sandwich, and support this fundraiser. Because it's for our honor guard equipment. What's the date? Five nineteen. Five nineteen from twelve to four. Sanger, Texas, Bolivar Barbecue on Bolivar Street. It's by the Denton Jeep Club. And right. it's by the Denton County Jeep Club. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, is there any other questions or reports that I've missed? Uh, I, we're working hard on getting the program together for June 9th. Well, this is for June 9th, but I have another group meeting for our Okay. Just a second. Uh, but that's ever evolving, so we'll try to get you a more update about that in May. Okay, sure. Okay, so we have a group that meets for lunch on the uh, third Monday of every month, 11.30 to 12.30. We pick different locations in Benton County because some people live north, some people live south. Our next meeting will be on Monday, April the 16th at the Cotton Patch Cafe off of FM 3040 in Louisville. So come hungry if you're women veterans and wives of veterans, so it's a, it's a girl group. And they have great chicken fried steaks. Yeah. So come, <laughs> and, come and join us. It's just us to get to and know each Monday other and to co-mingle, have fun, a little smile, and, and what time? It's fun to eat. It'll be 11.30 to 12.30. And again, that's April the 16th, or always the third Monday, unless it's a holiday or something. Okay. And we'd love to have you come. You don't have to come to every one. We'll try and have it every month. And if you can come to some, others, other people can't. But we'd love to have you. And you just meet and greet and just have fun with one another. Ginger, are there other spousters like that that South is supposed to? Because actually, uh, somebody at the vet center was asking me today. So this is great. I have something to take back to. Yeah, we started it as a peer group here. Right. Um, but you know, there's a Yeah, we've been in the yeah. world. Guys will sit yeah. around and do a peer group and talk like that, mm -hmm. and women don't. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I mean, I just went with the bad Call it a social event. Yeah. 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 It has a separate honor flight. It's not the same as the Dallas honor flight, but there is a group in Austin that do it. And what's different about them is they are now going to run their, their second women's flight. Neither. They've done one woman's flight before. No one else does just women's flight. So if you are a Vietnam veteran air uh, person, I don't, I don't know if you have any World War II or Korean women that would like to go, all you have to do is get yourself down. But I have information if you want to contact me about how to get on their list. You won't find out until the end of the summer, but they were very encouraging that there was going to be space for people to go. So, And what is, what's it for? What is, honor it's to go, honor flight. the honor flights go back to Washington, D.C. and you visit the different monuments. And I, I understand there's that. a, women's, a new women's monument in Arlington, which oh. no one has seen because it's just come online. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping they're going to include that in, in our list of, of things. But you go see the memorials for oh, I Korea and World War II, Vietnam. Okay, and I have to get back with Being served during the, during the era of, yeah. of that is enough. You don't have to have combat experience at all. Um, but it's a great opportunity to go with other women, and I've already gotten a list of for the Vietnam uh, Memorial where all the women's names are on the plaque, so we can find them. So yeah, there's a women's uh, museum at Arlington. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they include that on there, but they should. And there's actually um, mm -hmm. a young female soldier named Sam Huff. Her name is Sam. So when they came to tell her family that she was killed mm -hmm. in action, that um, they, they messed up and said, your son has been killed. But um, Sam is the youngest female soldier buried in Arlington Cemetery. And her uniform is in the museum there at Arlington. And then her mother was a Vietnam veteran. She was air traffic control in Vietnam, a Marine. And she, the daughter was a soldier. And uh, when she died from uh, lung cancer after um, Sam died, uh, they were buried together in Arlington, so oh. they're the only mother and daughter wow. that uh, are buried there. Wow. So, yeah, you get to go there. But um, I was going to ask, I have a World War II veteran. She lives in a place up in Oklahoma in a vet center there. I mean, I know in Oklahoma. Yeah, she can be there. I mean, her, 
she'd have to have a person go with her, a caregiver, but she's 96 and she was away. Who? She didn't have her. I could give you the information if you wanted. She would love to go. Her caregiver would go with her. Them and they were very helpful. Mm -hmm. And what their criteria was, because of course we don't live in Austin or in that Austin area. And they were very encouraging. So, I don't know. You have to ask. I don't, I don't make any decision. We just put our names in. Mm -hmm. I was hoping to go. So, but you call that number? I call. I call. Okay. I, I have one. Thank you. I call Austin. Do you want to take a picture of this? Yeah. Uh, do we have any other questions or other reports? We need to try to get adjourned here. We got some that need to get home to their kids. Uh, any other questions or other reports? Okay, the next meeting date is May 14th. Sergeant of Arms, would you come and retire our colors? Chapter. Present. Arms. Order on. Okay, meeting is adjourned. <laughs> if you have questions now, feel free to talk among yourself. I just know some people have babysitters and they need to get home. I need all of the things uh, that you have. Thank you guys. Do you need more? Um, well, let's go. We should give Jesse one. She should have come up. Uh, I only need 13. So, yeah. I have four dudes. Yep, they gave me some. And I said four. Okay, so I probably get two in March, two in April. Okay, so maybe I'll go. But then we're only at 13 in Q1. Because one of those, one of those actually, actually, two of them. Really? Oh, my God. Uh, actually, well, we do want to but, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah. I mean, you have 10.